All right, big welcome you guys to part three of the Designed to Dream series. And if you had missed out or you weren't able to get on the other two, then I absolutely recommend going back to my YouTube channel and listening to part one and part two because these are linear and they go together. So they kind of build on each other. And if you know anybody that would benefit from this material, I did start a podcast this month. Ah, I'm so excited. And it's all of this, these lessons broken down into like 20, 10, 20 minute increments, like lesson by lesson, activity by activity. Um, so those will be posted on my YouTube channel and you can go to any podcast player. It is called Dreamcast. And basically I'm going to be sharing this information in short bursts, bursts, and then also be interviewing some really cool people. In fact, I don't want to like tell everyone because it hasn't happened yet, but I'll tell you guys. Um, Jack Canfield is somebody I worked with last year and his friend, Patty Aubrey, who was with him when he developed Chicken Soup for the Soul, agreed to be on the podcast. So my goal is I'm going to get her on and then my goal is to get Jack on and then my goal is to get John Maxwell on because why not? So Anyway, it's exciting. It's super fun to try and new projects and just kind of stay in your lane. This is my favorite thing to do. So needless to say, if you know anybody that would benefit from this material, then you can certainly refer them back to the recordings. But if an hour is too long, then get them on the podcast because they'll be able to um, like listen to that. Yes, the question is if you don't have iTunes, any podcast player. I don't have iTunes because I have an Android and I have CastBox. And it popped up for me. Like I was able to search it and it popped right up. So totally use it. Yeah. I know. It's so fun. Okay. Well, let's get started in today. So the first week we talked about um, like, why are we still here? Rating our current seven areas of life. Why are we still here? Let's get restless. Like, let's do something different. Like, let's not, let's get uncomfortable with where we are. So we have reason to take steps in the next direction. And then last week we talked about, well, the fact is, you guys, is if it were easy, we'd already be doing it. Um, and so there's things that slow us down. There's things that get in the way. There's limiting beliefs. There's, you know, fogginess or cloudiness or grief or resistance, uh, resentment, guilt, all these emotions that can get in the way of us taking action towards our goal. And we know that healing has to happen in order to for us to fully move forward and make in a in a way that's like a blessing you know and you're moving forward out of love and excitement rather than when you've got that baggage you just move forward more slowly <laughs> so the goal of last week was to release the brakes um it's kind of like you have a parking brake on and you could either try to go faster or you could just let go of the brakes and you will automatically go faster. So last week we worked through some of those tough emotions. And today is one of my favorite, favorite times because today we really get to talk and dive into what do you want? What do you want? Like, what do you want? Because honestly, it is very difficult to move anywhere if you don't know what you want. And most people don't know what they want. And so no wonder we all feel like we're spinning on this hamster wheel. So before we get into the exercises, because it's a lot of writing, a lot of like space for you guys to do the work, because honestly, we, a lot of times we know what to do, but we just don't do it. And so the goal of this is to create the space to do the exercises for accountability and, you know, to make use of the time. So we do it now and you don't have homework, that kind of thing. Um, but before we get into really brainstorming, what do you want out of life? Let's talk about um, things that we, habits that we make. So at least for me, when I was working my clinical psychology job, I was there for five years and I was miserable for about five years. You know, the first six months I had a honeymoon phase and I was excited to have a job out of school. And then I didn't love it. And I felt trapped. I felt like heavy. I was living for the weekends. I was a zombie. I didn't, I wasn't thriving. I was just like going through the motions and I decided that that was okay. And so I really just 
kind of gotten that funk where I was like, well, I guess this is the way life is. It stinks and everyone's grouchy and I'm on call and I have high anxiety because anybody could call me at any moment and like have be a really difficult conversation. And so I was just kind of in this spot where I wasn't happy. And then I would pray and I'd say, all right, Holy Spirit, do something. Show me, like, give me a sign, like bring the next thing into my life. You know what I mean? I was like, come on, show me anything. And I would wait. And I would wait. I would wait. I would just sit here and be like, okay, <laughs> waiting for something because I don't really know what to do now. And I would wait. And I waited for five years. And I would go on some job interviews and I'd say, I don't know if the grass is really greener on the other side. And I would, um, and so at least I know here, so I'm comfortable and I'm going to stay. And I was like, wait. I, and I kept asking other people, what should I do? You know, and I was, here's the deal. This is what I was doing. I was looking for the outside for everybody else to have an answer for me. And the answer was already inside. When I was in high school, my mom said, Denise, why don't you work at a coffee shop? You love coffee shops. And I was like, because mom, I don't want to learn to hate it. In my mind, work meant anxiety and anger and frustration. And I didn't want to pair what I loved with work. Isn't that interesting? Uh, I, my sister went into exercise science. And uh, they always said, Denise, why don't you do something with exercise and nutrition and all of like health related because you always work out and you love that kind of stuff. And I was like, because that is my hobby and I do not want to learn to hate going to the gym. And so I would never do something in that. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I was doing. I was looking at the outside, waiting for people to tell me what to do instead of listening to the natural inclinations, passions, desires things that I already had. It's like I'm saying, all right, God, tell me what to do, but I'm ignoring all of the gifts and talents and passions he's given me. And I can imagine him being like, hello, <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Like, you enjoy all this stuff. Why aren't you doing it? You, you want to help people and you want them to feel better. Help, you know, I, because honestly, like my favorite things are like coffee shops and working out and reading books. Like that is my favorite thing. <laughs> and those are, what, those are my two hobbies still. 36 years later, those are my hobbies. And uh, what's so awesome is that that's a lot of what we get to do with our business now. Once I really started taking action on and listening to my own self and trusting my gut and trusting my intuition, I was able to take steps in that direction. And now we get paid to make new friends and stay healthy. Like, sounds like my ideal dream job, doesn't it? Yeah, I get to, I get paid to go have coffee with my distributors. Like, hello, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. But for so long, I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't allowing those passions to, to mean something. You know, I think a lot of times we do, we just ask, we ask for help and then we wait for this external thing when what we need to do is really listen to ourselves because God already did give us our passions, our gifts, our, ex like he's told us what to do. It's already inside, but so many of us are just not listening. So today it is, it's about trusting our gut. It's about allowing the intuition to bubble up and trusting that that is what God wants us to do whether you have a heart for animals, whether your color personality is green, blue, red, or yellow. <laughs> That's the way you were created for a reason. It's time to own it and it's time to trust it. So then next week we can ta start ta make, taking action steps towards it. So in the first exercise, I'm going to put on some really fun music. And I'm going to time it. I promise I'm going to time it so that I don't forget. Two. I'm going to do about two minutes. And this first exercise is basically just to ask yourself the question, what brings me joy? What brings me joy? 
if I like what, like if it's a walk in the woods, is it playing card games with my kids? Is it cooking? Is, you know, what is it? Is it reading a book in a hospital to a child? Like, what is it when you leave and you are just filled to the brim? Like, what brings you joy? That is the first question. We've got lots more to do, but that's the first one. I'm going to put on some music, set the timer for two minutes, and give you a space to just write out things that bring you joy. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chats, and I will start. Soft. Beautiful music. Right now. When you're writing down the things that bring you joy, be specific. What about being with your family? What do you want to do? How do you feel? And expand on that. There's lots of things that bring you joy. What are they? All right, so that was two minutes. Felt like a lullaby though. Oh my goodness, how soothing was that? Enjoy spending time with your son. What are things that came to mind? And if you're listening on YouTube, the recording, I hope you spent time during those two minutes to think about the things that bring you joy as well. So if you're on live, post in the chats. What are some things that came up for you? Inspiring and, melt and mentoring others, working with teens at the YMCA, laughing, absolutely. Yes, when all the family and kids are home laughing, playing games, walk, poetry, helping others reach their weight loss and health goals, eating dinner. Dinner time is something that brings me joy too. Volunteering, absolutely sharing your journey because people are inspired by that. Cooking. I'm always afraid to cook for others. <laughs> like I like my food, but I don't know that they would. Throwing dinner parties. Ooh, I love to throw dinner parties when I can hire a chef. <laughs> Sports. Awesome. Yes. Right. Yes. Cuddling, yes, awesome. Game night with friends, awesome. Dinner time with no electronics, absolutely. Traveling with your wife, yes. Awesome, good job you guys, thank you for doing that. Sometimes all it takes is just 
letting things come to mind, maybe things we haven't done in a while. There's different seasons in our lives where we have small kids and that has to take priority for a while. And then we get to say, what do I like to do when I'm not nursing every three hours? What do I like to do when I can sleep through the night? Running races, absolutely. You know what brings me joy is scheduling races when Owen comes to and we do 5Ks together. And I just like love seeing him cross the finish line and be, I don't know, it's so cute. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much for doing that. So the next writing exercise is basically asking yourself the question, what do I want? Now, what I'd like you to do is write down, I'll pull it up for you so you can see it, seven areas of life. We talked about this the first week. Business, now I did, um, yeah, I did change biz career to business because I think in our situation that makes more sense. I'm gonna be doing this, if anybody's in South Bend, I'm doing a, whole, a half an hour on this kind of stuff. Um, on the 12th, so next Friday. Anyway, um, I, so I decided to change it to business because of that. So business, finances, family, friends, giving back, health and hobbies. I also changed legacy to giving back because that's another kind of it works lingo. So business, finances, family, friends, giving back, health and hobbies. And so the question for this next exercise is to say what would take this to a 10? Whatever your rating was before, what would take this to it? What would take this area of business to a ten? What would a ten, a day in a ten biz, like a business ten, look like? What would a dream finance look like? What would dream family look like? What would dream friends look like? What would dream giving back look like? What would dream health look like? What would dream hobbies look like? Now again, we're trusting that what is stirred up here is what the Lord gives us. So we don't have to ask, God, is this what you want from me? Because the answer is like, yeah, we're trusting that these are things that he's putting in your heart right now. Now, obviously, you want to make sure you're in alignment when you're doing these types of exercises. If you're like, wanting to hurt someone that is not from God, but <laughs> what we're doing is we're creating a space when you're in alignment. So then you can trust your intuition and trust your gut. So I'm gonna give you five minutes here. If you're watching on the recording, like I have not figured out how to edit yet, so just do it now too, because it'll be five minutes of beautiful music. And I am going to give you time to write down, you can do detailed, you can do bullet points, you can do whatever fits you to say what would a dream business, like a, t a rated 10 business look like. Finances do all seven areas of life. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Awesome. All right, so spend some time writing that. I'll leave these up for you so you can um, read them if you need it. And I will put this on the side. All right, five minutes starts now. What, oops, what do you want? What do you really want in all seven areas of life? The seven, Rachel, are on the screen. You should be able to see them. They're business, finances, family, friends, giving back, health, and hobbies. I'll copy and paste them in the chats. 
just in case you're on your phone and it's not easy to do. Patricia, thank you for sharing in the chat. And I would just recommend being a bit more specific. Like be as clear and detailed as you can. What does success or a dream 10 business look like? What are you doing every day? How much income do you wanna make per month? How many people are you working with on your team? They're fun excited, passionate, connected with you? What does your dream finances look like? How much do you have in savings? Debt free, what does that look like? What would it take for you to be an eight to a 10 or heck a 10 plus plus in every area of life? We're dreaming here. So there's no reason to think, how is it going to happen? Is it realistic? Now is not the time for that. The time right now is to really ask, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? All right, so it's been five minutes, which for some may seem like forever. <laughs> and, for, and some may seem like you just are getting started. But I wanna say thank you so much for taking this seriously and doing the action right now, because again, this could be homework and I could say this is my recommendation, but I also wanna create the space to do it together today. Um, that's how change actually happens, not just knowing this, but actually putting pen to paper and doing it. Did anything, um, like the first time I did this exercise, Brandon and I stood like, or sat like this, and he um, didn't really know what I was going to do, because sometimes I don't tell him what I'm learning, and I just like spring it on him, and what we did is I just said, 
what do you want? And made him answer. And um, this is what I did. I'm going to be honest. So I put on success principles. So it was like a speaker phone because um, we, were, we were fishing. And then I was like, success principles recommended this exercise. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. How convenient. Let's do it right now. Because I wanted to make him not think it was my plan. <laughs> okay. Um, but with that being said, we just sat together and I said, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? In all of these different areas, what do you want? What do you want? And at first, you guys, you go like, I want to be nice. I want family that's helpful and kind. I want, but eventually you get down to like, what do you really want? What do you really want? And things may pop up that you didn't even truly knew were there. Like I realized when I was doing this exercise that I want to take my dad to Ireland because he has, is Irish rooted and he loves to hike. And I, and so it's now on my dream board to take my dad to Ireland and have an, a memory with him. Um, taking my entire family on a uh, Disney cruise came up when I was doing this exercise. Creating memories is important to me. So all of these things started I started thinking about them and I would never have thought about them before. So just give yourself time to ask, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Uh, what do I really want life to look like? So we're going to do one more exercise and then we will share it in a breakout room because I want to give you a chance to talk about what you're kind of digging up or writing down. Um, if you have anything that popped up dear, for you during this exercise, put it in the chats right now because I think we often can learn from each other as well um, when we do this. Like I love Lynette just said that she wants to read 12 books in a year. So one book per month. Perfect. The thing is, is like now that you know that, you can put it on the calendar and you can do it and you can be intentional about it. Um, Awesome. Work as a team. Absolutely. Ireland. Oh, Nikki said that this is making her tear up. It's important and it's something that we don't do very often. Giving back, adopt a family for Christmas, but do something year round. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so the goal for these two exercises is just to start getting your dreaming juices flowing. So you're starting to really think like, what do I want? And what, what do I like to do? And what do I want? And um, the next exercise is creating your ideal or dream day. So what this means is that from the beginning um, of the day to the end of the day. Now obviously most days are gonna, like some days might be different, but a lot of days are fairly similar. So in your ideal or dream day, when you get up in the morning, what do you see? What do you feel? Who are you with? What do you do? Uh, what is your ideal routine? If you work right now and your ideal day is that you don't work, then write that. It's okay. Like take the lid off of the how and the what if, but, but let, the next exercise is to write a whole detailed day out. Like what is your perfect ideal day? I can give you some examples from mine. Some of it is happening right now and some of it is not, but it's still my ideal day. Number one, I get up and I work out. And my ideal day would not be five to seven, but I have children who go to school, so five to seven is when I do it. And so I work out from five to seven, I come home and get them ready. So we do breakfast and brain ends up and we're all chipper and helpful <laughs> and eating breakfast nicely and getting along and listening the first time. Remember, this is my dream day. I can be whatever I want. And so we're all, we're getting to school nicely and we only have to ask Owen once to get in the car and it is awesome because we're all just filled with peace and joy <laughs> um, before breakfast starts. So I kind of got ahead of myself, but I work out, I come home, I drink my coffee, I get home about 6.30, from 6.30 to 7. I drink my coffee, I do my devotionals, I just do my journaling, I kind of get my mind right for the day, I put my tasks down, I know what I'm doing. 7 to 8 is like getting kids breakfast and ready for school. I drop Eli off. And then from 9 to noon, I am working on the podcast and some special projects. And then from noon to 4, I'm working on at work stuff. And then I pick them up from school. And, um, oh, I also get my nails done, um, go to lunch with friends, like distributors. And we are 
um, working power hours or brainstorming or charting during that time. Uh, sometimes throughout that ideal day, pick them up, have dinner, and then I get back online um, three days a week. So regardless, I've like set out my intentional ideal day and some of it you can implement quickly. Some of it, like you say, oh, I want to read 12 books a year. That's one book a month. I can do that. Start that now. Just put it in the calendar. Some of it, you can just say, oh, I want to do family game night with my kids once a week, Sundays. Sure. All we have to do is say, hey, guys, you're playing a game. Like, let's do it. Um, some of it, you're going to recognize that you can implement quickly into your schedule. Other things may take some time. Like another example of my ideal day is that we have a personal shopper and this personal shopper goes grocery shopping for me because who wants to go to Meyer in the snow? Nobody. And so this personal shopper goes grocery shopping for me and brings vegetables every other day or three times a week. Um, so we really just always have a, like it's just something that's not on my mind anymore. Um, and they just came out with shipped at my local grocery store, which means that there is a like an Uber delivery service. I order it and they bring it to me. And that is now included in my ideal day. Like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, the other ideal day for me is I have a nanny who helps twice a week and she also does laundry and clean the house. So I come home. <sighs> Like, these are not things that I had 10 years ago, you guys. These are things, some of it's, and I do have shipped now, so that's true. And I do have a nanny that's two days a week. I'm like trying to think of things that I'm still dreaming of that haven't quite happened yet. Um, but the goal is, is to like really, oh, personal trainer. Yeah, I mean, just think about all these things that you want. That's it. That's the whole goal of it. Don't think about how, don't think about if it's realistic. Don't think about, like, it could sound super silly, but then all of a sudden you have, like my next goal, this is my next goal is to have a driver. Because do you know how much you could get done if I was had a driver? Oh my gosh. And someone told me, um, you should just hire an Uber. And I was like, to pick my kids up from school? Like I don't quite get it. <laughs> like just drive me around town, guys. But anyway, that's still in my ideal day. Um, so just get really detailed and clear. The other thing you want to connect it to is your emotions. So don't just think, what do you want to do? Think about how you feel along the way. Because there's an importance. Um, someone said they'd be the driver. That's funny. <laughs> Come to Michigan and drive in three feet of snow. You're hired. Um, but the whole, the whole point is that when you have this vision in your mind, science proves that it has to make it happen. And we'll talk about more of this next week, the science behind all of this, but they're really now starting to prove with neuroscience and quantum physics that the way we think, and if we're focused on what we want, things start to move in our lives. So if we're focused on what we don't want, things move in that way too. But if we're focused on what we do want, things start to change. However, your thoughts and your emotions do need to be connected because if you have a goal and you don't really believe that it's going to happen or it makes you feel anxious or sad, then honestly, it's like two conflicting things and nothing, either nothing will move or you'll be um, frustrated or irritated or like, you know, that when it's like, you don't feel, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I'm going to stop talking and give you some, a chance to go through your ideal day. Ooh, Samantha, there's tons of stuff. So Dr. Leaf, she asked if there's an article on this. Dr. Leaf, L-E-A-F, is where I really started digging into the science. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I interviewed Carla Burns, who is personally being mentored by Dr. Leaf right now, and I interviewed her on the podcast that's coming out next Wednesday. So listen to it. Like, I've listened to some of these interviews that I've done with these awesome people, and I'm like so excited so anyway so listen to that she she's gonna also ask to get dr leaf on i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna really work on that yeah she, it's carla's amazing carla burns is amazing she's taught me a lot of this kind of thing because she's worked direct directly with dr leaf and dr leaf has done um he's she's a neuroscientist so she's done brain scans and like she's a brain lady so she knows all about the brain and she's been able to, to scientifically prove that the way we think physically changes the brain and she's a christian and connects it to scripture it's like my blood oh cool good job melissa yay 
I oh, that's so cool. Yes, let us know your doc, your um aha uh -huh moments. Okay, back to business. I'm gonna start the timer and I'm gonna give you like three to five minutes because I do want to give you some space to write this down, but I also want to give you time to share it with um, with some people. So your dream day starting now. Sarah, write a bit of your dream day in the chat. Let's hear it. Great job, Donna. Thank you for sharing. Yes, personal chef, cleaning lady. I also wrote in my ideal day that I fly first class because I get upgraded every time. I'm certainly not paying it. This <laughs> can be crazy. But I get upgraded all the time to first class. Or I get paid, it's another thing. Get paid to, to fly, so really. You get upgraded to first class, Tori, by having Delta Sky Miles. The more you fly, the more, like I'm gold right now, so I do get upgraded. But when you're like platinum and diamond, you get upgraded every time. And it just means you have to fly more to get those benefits. And dream days evolve, for sure, Jessica. Now, one thing I wanna mention as you guys are writing that is it's best to write this in present tense been about three minutes. I know that's probably not a lot of time, but um, write it in present tense like it's already happening. And remember, this is your dream. This is your 10 dream. So when we were on the cruise, someone said to me, she actually was a late add-on and she wasn't quite sure about what we were doing on the cruise. And um, we got to the 2020 party and she said, um, my dream is to not be in debt and have a car that works. And I was like, okay, <laughs> not going to fly. Let's dream a little bit bigger. Remember, this is your dream. So what is your dream? Like dream a bit bigger than having a car that works. Like you just freaking brought, bought a brand new, um, infinity or Mazda or Audi or, 
I don't know, Cadillac. It doesn't matter. But like, you don't just have a car that works. You have like a brand new car um, that is like amazing to drive and super safe and you feel awesome in it. Another thing is to um, don't use the word not in when you're speaking this language because you want to you want to speak out what you want. And again, this is really going into next week. But if you say things like don't look at the elephant in the room, what is everybody doing? Don't don't um, think about your grandma naked in the shower. What is everybody doing? Your subconscious does not hear the word don't. So I saw um, uh, my dream day is to not worry about rent and have necessities. No, 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 no. Your dream day is to have plentiful. Your dream day is to have overflowing. Your dream day is to be able to pay for rent um, and necessities like confidently. Your dream day is to have an abundance. Your dream, so like let's dream a little bit bigger. Dream a little bit bigger. Because again, don't worry about the how. That's not it. Don't worry. Just focus on what you want. So instead of saying never missing another moment of my daughter's life, say my dream day is I am, an, I am a present mom in my daughter's life. Like part of my dream day is that I get to volunteer at school. I have recess duty on Friday. And like that is a part of my dream. Like I want to be able to volunteer without having to ask a boss, right? So Nikki, take the word not out. So just say, um, I want to either work from home. I want to own my time. I want to be financially free. Like think about these um, ideas in the positive. Teresa, it does. It does. I'll, yes, Teresa, it says it is proven that once, um, don't worry about the how, the how figures itself out. Another word for that is the Lord determines your steps. Our job is just to get super clear and excited about what we want and the how will come. <laughs> is yours up there, Rebecca? I missed it. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Detailed, good. Good job. Perfect. Yeah, the more detailed you are, the better. Awesome. Yes, dream day is to live in abundance and overflow, um, income. What's another word of, for, for not worried? It's like confident, it's free, it's Give me another good word. Peace. Yeah, the component, the opposite of fear is peace. The, comp, the opposite of anxiety is peace. So if you are just like living in peace, knowing that rent is paid for, like you don't even think about it anymore. What I've told, um, said from on stage before is that this business gives me brain space because when you don't have to work, when you aren't worrying about how the daily necessities are going to be met, you have the ability to dream. And when we went to Africa, we learned, I mean, we know that dreaming is a luxury at times. When you don't know how you're going to be fed, it's very difficult to think about much else. Um, but what we're saying is that when you, like, when you're dream day, when you're, like, like, you're above that, I mean, you are so focused on what you want, the how figures itself out, and then you do have the brain space to dream more. Does that make sense? And you're just going to see God work miracles, miracles. Teresa can attest to that. Miracles. Where just like, I don't even know how that happened, but it, she got picked from Mark, Mike Patillo to go to conference for free. And two days before she said, um, should I go to conference? I don't know. I'm scared. Da, 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 da. But we just said, this is what you want. Create your plan. Let's do it. And she was one of the Christmas winners. And she just got her conference ticket and um, all of that stuff for free. Like the how figured itself out, you guys. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. Oh, a houseboat, Stacy. Look at you. 
She drinks a pot of coffee before her kids wake up. Perfect. Just kidding. You didn't say that. <laughs> she just said she makes a pot of coffee. Perfect. Awesome job. Um, the Lord determines your steps. Is that the verse, of Amanda? I'll look it up. I don't know it off the top of my head. Awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want you guys to have a chance to just share your dream days with each other um, for about five minutes. And then we're going to come back and close out today. Oh man, I have a whole nother thing. Forgot about that. Let's see. We'll have time. We'll have time. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to if you don't want to get into the group, if you're not in a, a place where you can talk, no worries. Just stay on and you don't have to accept it. This is just something added to give you a place to talk um, because saying this stuff out loud can be really healing and helpful. But no pressure. If you're not in a place where you can talk, that is a-okay. I'm going to create the rooms. You just accept it and I will give you about five minutes. Amanda, I love your It Works check. Yes! Imagine how you're going to feel when that happens. Love all the healing. Oh, Marissa, you were right. Yep. Proverbs 16, 9. Sarah, I did just go through and move people around because not everybody joined in, but. Sorry about that. It is a really cool feature if you ever get a chance to use it. Yes, I actually have heard of John SRF. I did some research with him. Well, not with him, of him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he seems like he's a staple in the industry. <laughs> I just moved you to somewhere else, Donna. Let's see. No one was in yours. I can see if people join or not join. And then if I see somebody by themselves, I try to move them. I 
know. I love the breakouts, but sometimes it's, um, I'm just not totally sure if it's worth it if we lose so many people doing it. <laughs> All right. I am going to close the rooms. It's been four minutes, so hopefully those that um, were able to chat were able to. Give them a minute left. <laughs> That's funny. All right, 10 more seconds, and then we'll move on to the next exercise. But for those of you who had a chance to share your dream day with um, somebody and saying it out loud, how was it? I mean, there is a difference, I think, from, from just writing it, thinking it, writing it, and then saying it out loud. I'd love for you to hear, say in the chats here what that experience was like for you as I move on. Yay, so fun. It does. It makes it more real. It's fun hearing from others. Love meeting new people. It's good. It, it is to find you have similar dreams and then also brainstorm. You're like, ooh, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. I want that too. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. All right. Well, let's move on. We've got one more thing to work on before we end tonight. And remember, this is not something that like ends. This is just really getting your dreaming juices flowing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all these feel good feelings. This is why this is my favorite um, topic because we get to talk about the fun stuff. Um, but we are going to talk, we're going to take this, the joy, the things that we want, what do we feel passionate about, what uh, is connected to us and write our life purpose statement. So if you can read on the screen, it says the life purpose statement is um, helps the life purpose statement helps to guide your decision. Um, so basically, the goal is that you use this as a baseline. Then any other options, ideas, time management, you're like, does this line up with my life purpose? Does this line up with my dream day? Is this taking me closer or further away from what I want life to look like? Thomas Edison stated that his mission was to create inventions that people needed, that people would pay for, and that would be profitable. Imagine that having, having that life purpose statement as a roadmap to guide daily decisions and actions. So basically, this life purpose statement ends up being an internal GPS for you, where you're saying, is this helping me get closer, helping me get further away, and that helps you make daily decisions. So list two of your personal qualities. Um, and these are my examples, passion and belief. Just two of your unique personal qualities. Put down two of them right now on your paper. When you think of yourself, what are two qualities that stand out to you? List one or two ways you enjoy expressing these qualities when interacting with each other. One or two ways you enjoy expressing these qualities. And I said to encourage and inspire others. The third question or statement says, assume the world is perfect right now. What does it look like? How is everyone interacting with each other? What does it feel like? This statement, this is a statement in present tense describing the ultimate condition the perfect world as you see it and feel it. A perfect world is a fun place to be. So my example is my perfect world is filled with peace and everyone is filled with joy. 
I mean, imagine just walking around and everyone's like skipping. They're just so chipper. And then combine three pot prior into one single statement. My purpose is to use my passion and high belief to encourage and inspire others to live with a deep sense of knowing that they are already enough and they have all that they need to be more of who God created them to be. And I say this because when, I, when in my opinion and experience, when people know that they're already enough and they have all that they need to be, or like they already have everything they need to be, they are filled with joy and peace. Like there's the security here. So that's why this is mine. This is just my example. So you would do yours. Amanda, would you mind unmuting and sharing what yours is? Because I know you've done this exercise before. I did not prep her, so she like might not have it memorized, but that's okay. <laughs> well, thankfully I have it. Oh, wait. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I actually have it wrote out and right beside me in my Bible. So <laughs> awesome. So my life purpose is to use my passion and high belief because I'm very passionate about things. I'm to be the light of this world and love people to the Lord to encourage and inspire others to live with a deep sense of knowing that they are loved and already enough. One of my passions is to breathe life into people that are so beat down and just so lost that hurts my heart, right? It's that holy discontent um, that they have all they need to be and who God created them to be. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Amanda has been one of my guinea pigs to go through some of this stuff. So, and she's giving me feedback and helping me make it better. And it's been so awesome. So thank you. Someone asked to share the screen again. So there it is. All right. I'm not going to, we're not going to have time to go back into the um, breakout sessions, but in the chat, if you want to share yours with each other, I would love to hear it. If you want to go into the breakouts, let me know and I can, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything else to do, so I can do it. Um, I just want to respect our time here. All right, Dorothy says, my purpose is to use my helpful nature to bring love and hope to others' lives. Awesome. Ooh, Tammy, unique qualities, positivity, warrior, survivor. I love that. So your life purpose statement, this is something that you use as your internal GPS. What are you doing right now to live out this life's purpose? Are there areas in your life where you're able to, to perform this, to do this, to fulfill this, where you feel like, like yes, this is my purpose? Um, do you have spaces, not every, everything you do, but spaces in your life where you feel like this is being met? And then this can help make decisions. When you have choices, is this helping me get closer to my goals or away from my goals? Amanda, they want you to type up your mission statement so they can write it down too. <laughs> if you are on the cruise, I know we did this exercise on the cruise and some of you um, created yours then as well. Feel free to unmute and share if you want to. But you can put this everywhere. Three by five cards, in your Bible, on your refrigerator, in your, on your window. Window, I meant mirror in your bathroom. That's what I meant. You could also put it on a window. <laughs> All right. Amber says, Dorothy says, she loves all the positivity, absolutely. Amber, my purpose is to use my excitement and humor to inspire everyone to smile always and to laugh every day. Love themselves to share their love with everyone they encounter. This creates a world with no hatred, violence, and only pure love. Becky, my purpose is to use my humor and passion to inspire and affect change within people to pursue their dreams and bring joy to those around them. Butterfly effect. Ooh, I love that. That's the name of a book, Becky, just so you know. Like the book that you write. 
Um, Sarah, my purpose is to shine light on those who are darkened, to share positivity so much so that they feed on my energy and in turn they become a light source. Amen. I love that. You guys are all, yeah, Stacy said humor too. My purpose is to listen, to give a safe place to talk without judgment. Mm, that's good. That's good. That's good. So I recommend if you didn't get a chance to share it tonight, to share it with your upline, your downline, message me. I want to hear, share it with um, your spouse. Let them know what you are thinking and what is brewing within you. And if you didn't get a chance to fully um, experience this exercise, then give yourself some time to do it um, throughout the next few days. We are going to end with... A Joel Osteen quote it says, change your words, change your world, shape your future. The reason that we create such a clear there, a clear vision for our future, that it produces passion inside of us to give us momentum and excitement to take steps in the, in, um, to take steps forward. So start talking about what you want everywhere. Once we think it and we have it here, and then we just start talking about it. We're going to talk next week about how to put it in your calendar and tons of um, time management techniques and really creating an action plan and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we're going to end today with the challenge to talk about it. Tell everybody what you want. Um, start taking steps in that right direction. And, uh, and you will see that when you change your thoughts, which changes your words, your world will change as well. So same time, same place next week. Next week is all about action, getting it on your calendar. Be prepared for time blocking and strategizing and reverse engineering and all the things that successful people do in order to have the, to be the queens of their calendar. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you later.